if we think about what really changes us, what, what, what engages us, it's never just statistics. It's always something we saw, or something we felt. So I think the element of bringing in people's imagination and creativity, the young people did vision boards with a local artist. I can't emphasise enough how important that is. People don't need more information. We have a lot of information and people are overwhelmed and uh, often depressed by a lot of the information we have about climate change and climate issues. And it was a way of looking at how do we speak, not just to the mind, but to the heart. How do we get people to feel about this? So the project was quite short. Um, we had um, just four or five months um, and we created a, a series of three sessions to um, hold with communities across Murray. The first was a climate cafe, which was exploring how we talk about climate and how we can have better conversations and find the values in common that we have with people that we might not normally talk to about these issues so that we can break the climate silence. The second session was a visioning session where participants were guided through a, a, a meditation, imagining waking up in a world in 2030 or in the future when we've achieved all these changes. The third session was important to me because there's a huge body of research showing that it's not statistics that change our behaviour, it's stories um, and and things that engage our emotion. Um, and so I wanted to bring a storytelling element into the third session. I was invited to work as a storyteller and when I sat with it, I realised what I wanted to do was to maybe work a little bit more poetically with it. So what I began with was um, a prompt around remember. So inviting people to remember what changes have come about through people's action and even particularly recently looking at some of the changes that happened so quickly during lockdown. Remember the first lockdown when the world slowed down, the traffic stopped and we could hear birdsong. We grew our own food and tried to do some good for our neighbours. We spent less time shopping and more time walking in nature. While politicians tried to get their act together, folk at the grassroots set up support groups and food kitchens to help each other. We saw then who we really depend on. The health workers, the carers, the shop workers, the lorry drivers, the farmers and the bin men, none of whom get paid enough because we're in a system that puts profits first. But we saw how quickly we can create change if we put our minds to it. Then the invitation was to move into imagine, this idea that we can imagine into a better future. The participants went through this visioning and then described to each other what they saw. It was a more equitable space where you didn't have to fight for things or to uh, outdo each other. We have our wind farms and we also have tidal wave power. We can now have lots of nice fruit and veg and everything because we now realise we've got to cut down transport. So there's we're really two juxtapositions there. There's a really advanced society but living very basic lifestyles. Imagine a clean ocean, sparkling rivers, beautiful air and abundance of beasties. Imagine a world where everyone understood what was at stake. Imagine a world of optimism, hopes, dreams, kindness and light. A world where our happiness and health is the priority. A world where billionaires and millionaires never came to be. Hmm. Imagine a fair world where we have where all our needs are met. Everyone, no exceptions. Imagine sharing and caring, looking into the future with a positive attitude, including all. Nobody was asking for a palace or a yacht or a big car. They were all just wanting quite a simple, um, what seemed like healthy way of life where people's well-being was looked after and everybody in the community had a role to play and 
and was respected for everything they brought. Each time that happened, each time the remembering happened, each time the imagining happened, it seemed to grow a sense of more capacity and more possibility for people. And what was wonderful is people do their own imagining and then they hear each other's and they mutually inspire each other. And more and more there's a sense of a collective energy building to see, yes, change is possible. And some of it is much simpler than we imagine. Then I invited people to do a piece called Coming Back to Our Senses, so building on the visions that they had created in the previous session, really opening that up through the senses. Warmth and light and nature all around, trees blossom, greenery, beasts are buzzing, my true love. A woodland, dappled light breaking through the canopy. Birds singing, people talking, no cars or overhead planes to interrupt nature. Nature, green, open space. Then the last part was to really help people to envision how does this begin? You know, it's all very well to have these lovely visions, but how do the existing structures that we live in, how did the systems that are in place help to bring about those changes? It started with the council. Careful listening to the citizens, the farmers, the TSI Moray, and knowing things could never be the same. Who else should be here, they asked. Indigenous councils heard the call. They asked, how can you serve your children who march for Earth's well-being? There was engagement with all the local community to garner ideas, to co-create what an education would look like for the future. Mindfulness, skills development, practical skills, involvement with the parents of all ages, breaking down the barriers between ages and ability. Children are going to be encouraged, praised, cared for. So really looking at how those systems within our community helped, what steps did they take practically and actively that helped to bring about the change. So that seemed to really bring it down to earth a little bit more. I had a lot of respect for the participants because they came along very open to trying something new that was potentially quite scary for some people. Like some groups had never done a, a guided meditation before. Some had, but some hadn't. It was amazing for me to see how beautifully and eloquently people responded to the prompts and I really wish we had filmed them there and then because I'd love you to hear it in their words. There were some just wonderful pieces and wonderful visions. And to see how people left really inspired and more motivated to act in the world as a result of that was wonderful. From these workshops and sessions, um, two of the groups are going to run their own series with other people that weren't able to participate. Um, there's a group who um, applied for a solar panel to help them with, make their um, community garden um, carbon neutral. Um, so it's led to further actions. It's a really powerful way of helping people to engage with what matters and helping them to find creative solutions to the problems that we face. I'd love to do more sessions like this with other groups, uh, to be able to really reach people who, who don't have time always to, to come along to sessions. Um, to to go further into it, to go from not just what if, but 
what next? So um, back casting into how did we get to that vision and therefore what are the next things we need to do in the coming years because we have so little time left. Um, but if we can make these changes, the potential for a better life is, is, is just really exciting.